When working on an observer or an estimator, questions of observability for a state space representation comes into play. So this video covers a definition for observability. We'll look at determining observability for some systems and introduce the observability matrix. The video concludes with an example calculating observability. When we're designing an observer, if there is a state variable, one or more state variables, that has no effect upon the output, then we cannot estimate the state variable via output feedback. The observers that we designed use output feedback, and if a given state variable has no effect on the output, then we cannot come up with an estimate for that state variable using our observer. <coughs> more formally, formally, we want to say that if the initial state vector can be found from the input u and the output y measured over a finite interval from the initial time, then the system is observable. I know that's a lot of words, but in short we're saying whether or not it's possible to deduce the state variables from the input and the output. Now, remember, just like in the controllability of a system, or just as the input can affect state variables either directly or through coupling, we have the same type of phenomenon for observability. So a state variable can influence the output either directly or through coupling of variables. Let's look at observability for a system. Here we have a system with a state space representation uh, with a diagonal state matrix. The input matrix and the output matrix is all ones. So the output equation is x1 plus x2 plus x3. This system is observable because all the state variables are coupled to the output so they all influence the output. Now let's change this state space representation slightly. We have the same diagonal state matrix, input matrix, but the output matrix has a zero in the first element. And so our output equation is just x2 plus x3. Since we have a diagonal state matrix, there's no coupling between the state variables. And so that means that this system is unobservable because the state variable x1 has no influence over the output. In general, the state matrix is not diagonal. And so these relationships between the output and the state variables, y and x sub i, are not so clear as in the preceding examples. Therefore, we're going to use the observability matrix for testing general systems. So we say that the nth order system with state space res representation as shown here is observable if the matrix O sub M, that's the observability matrix, which is defined as C, C times A, all the way down to C times A to the N minus 1 power. If that matrix is of rank N, then the system is observable. So if this matrix is full rank, then this is an observable state space representation. Now an example. We want to determine whether or not, if we're using the position of mass 2 as the output, the system shown below is observable. We're going to use the state vector made up of the position and velocity of the two masses, x1, v1, x2, v2, and the following parameters for the system. So we have the k, d, and m values for the, the two degrees of freedom. Here is our state equation. We have a state matrix that is not diagonal, so there is coupling between the state variables an input vector and an output vector. So we have 0, 0, 1, 0 for our output matrix because x2 is um, the variable we're going to use for the output. So the position of mass 2 is our output, so we have 0, 0, 1. And our observability matrix, O sub m, which is represented here, has this numeric value. The rank of this matrix is 4, meaning that all four of the rows of this matrix are independent. There's no linear combination of any of subset of the rows that would give another row. 
So because the observability matrix has full rank, then this system is observable. In other words, it is possible to estimate a past state by measuring the input and the output over a finite time interval.